Here's a close look at how my Garmin Forerunner 965 is holding up. And it's been a little bit, so I figured now would be a fantastic time to show you how it's holding up as far as durability goes, but also what I've loved about this watch, as well as what I wish were different about the 965 after having swam, biked, and run with it for a little over 100 days now. So my wife is actually pretty picky about watches, but she really likes this Garmin Forerunner 965. She actually stole this watch for me for uh, about a month. So in this follow-up review, I'll give you her thoughts on the 965 as well, uh, but I've managed to steal it back from her recently, and I wanted to talk first about how the watch body has held up over the past 100 days. And so far, so good. Uh, so a little context here, uh, I can see a few tiny little nicks in the titanium bezel here. It's not something that you'd ever notice in real life, uh, but uh, using the, the power of macro lenses, uh, or these particular video clips are zoomed in quite a bit, which does make it, um, it does make all of these little issues and nicks and things look a lot worse than they actually are. So uh, not a lot of scratches, not a lot of damage to speak of on this watch. Uh, not even a lot of scratches to that plastic watch body area. The one area that I was originally very concerned about was uh, the uh, Corning Gorilla Glass 3DX, which is this top lens material here, uh, because it actually does sit up above the titanium bezel. It is kind of hard to see when you just glance at the watch, uh, but it has this slight dome shape to it. It looks really nice, uh, but I was just worried that that extra rise was gonna make it um, easier to get scratched up or just take a little bit more of a beating. Uh, but for me personally, this display and this lens looks completely flawless so far. And I've got to think that, um, you know, some of you guys have had different experiences. Uh, it just sits up high enough that it's got to get some scratches on it, right? Uh, if you do have this watch, um, aim it towards, you know, a light or something like that to try to get a little bit of a glare. Let me know if you guys see scratches on your 965. Let me know in the comment section. But here's how this watch looks on my 165 millimeter wrists. And here's how it looks on my wife's wrists. So it's held up really well for me. Uh, and I'll say after the past 100 days or so, my two favorite things on this watch are the very bright, vibrant display and the lightweight, slim feel of this watch. So this Forerunner 965, which I have in the black color here, uh, this is the previous edition, the 955 here in white, uh, but the 965 is only about a half a millimeter wider than the 955, but with that tiny increase in width, the display size goes from 1.3 inches to 1.4 inches, or a gain of about uh, two or two and a half millimeters. So to get that bigger screen without adding a ton of width to the device, you can see that Garmin has actually shrunk down that black screen bezel, that little trim area around the display. And this is exactly what we all want, what we've asked for for years, more screen real estate with less of that useless black bezel. It has a 454 by 454 pixel uh, AMOLED display. So that's more than three times as many pixels or about double the pixel density of the previous version. So you end up with sharper graphics, uh, crisper icons, imagery that looks good, uh, crisper text on the watch itself. I actually find it noticeably easier to read when I'm glancing at my watch when I'm in the pool. Uh, it definitely seems okay in direct sunlight. It has a maximum brightness of a thousand nits. I've had zero problems looking at it on a bright sunny day when I'm out biking. And while this display and the watch face itself is very large, uh, this watch doesn't feel super big to me and it's, it's actually quite slim on the wrist. It's slimmer than the previous version of this device at about 14 and a half millimeters. And to me, I actually think that it's the slimness of these watches uh, that actually make them feel less bulky. And that bright display, it definitely is probably what encouraged my wife to steal this watch away from me. Um, she's not gonna do a big bulky watch, uh, but she does like a watch that she can see just cause her eyes aren't quite as sharp as they used to be. Uh, but with that brighter display in that slim design, um, there's only so much room for battery life. So we would expect battery life to be a bit of an issue here. Uh, I'm actually still seeing about six days of battery life with the way that I have been using this watch. So that's uh, the watch with always on display, 
um, with uh, multi-band GPS set to the automatic setting or um, Garmin calls it their SAT IQ method. Um, GPS is definitely hard on battery life and I typically do about an hour per day or so. Uh, I don't tend to use the onboard music option on this watch. This watch has 32 gigs of storage and it is compatible with uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, or Deezer. Uh, but streaming music will take a big hit on battery life. You can expect um, normal GPS battery life to go for about 22 hours when you are using it set up like I have it in that sad IQ method, but it'll go all the way down to about nine and a half hours if you're playing music which, you know, that's one of the reasons why I avoid using it, but I think the real reason is because I'm, you know, I'm too lazy to load podcast or sync it with my Spotify account or anything like that. Uh, and I tend to take my phone with me anyway to take photos. Uh, and I said this before, but I think that some just basic common sense settings, you could probably make, you know, what I'm seeing six days last um, seven or eight days with this watch. Again, even with that always on display, um, or maybe even setting that display into uh, gesture mode where you raise your wrist and you could, you know, take that battery life from six to eight days all the way to 23 days of battery life, which again, you're getting into that really exceptional battery life zone at that point. Now I've done a ton of lap swims with this watch, open water swims, uh, indoor and outdoor, and even mountain biking rides with this watch. Uh, I've done track workouts, trail runs, and road runs with this watch. The short answer that you're looking for is that the GPS data looks absolutely fantastic to me, and the heart rate data looks really good to me as well. I would highly recommend Garmin's automatic GPS selection tool. Garmin calls it that SAT IQ that I talked about earlier. It only uses the more battery intensive multiband GPS mode when it's absolutely necessary, when it's seeing GPS signals that are a bit weak. Uh, I'm guessing that, you know, for me it's not too often, but there's no real way to tell. Uh, but my theory is that the you know current batch of Garmin watches are extremely accurate even when they're not using multiband GPS. And I think that that probably has to do with uh, antenna design and the algorithms that are figuring out which data to uh, keep and which data to throw away. Uh, hard to say for sure. And when it comes to swimming, uh, I've tried you know, tons of different companies, um, tons of different ways to track swimming. And Garmin, again, has just been my long-term favorite. Nothing new here in particular with swimming. You got the same options to do kick sets or use the drill set mode to uh, specify, you know, specific distances when you are doing a drill set. Uh, you can use the watch in automatic lap detection mode or manually select it, which is uh, the way that I prefer to do things as far as splits goes. Uh, on the cycling side, the watch can connect to every single one of my weird cycling accessories. So that's normal stuff like heart rate monitors, speed cadence sensors, uh, power meters, uh, but can also connect to my cycling radar unit and it can display upcoming traffic, which is something that uh, I've actually become dependent upon and I don't really look at devices that can't handle that. And no issues on the running front either. Like I said, GPS accuracy seems extremely solid here and the watch can go the distance. Uh, I will say uh, if you are doing things like 100 mile ultra runs, then the 22 hour GPS battery life might not be quite enough to cover your needs. Not something that I do personally, uh, but uh, just wanted to mention that for you ultra runners. And my wife was super impressed with the uh, stress detection of this watch. It was telling her to do some relaxing breathing exercises. She said that she noticed it when our kids were at a swim meet and, uh, and she was watching our kids race and it was stressing her out. Uh, but one of my favorite features is the training readiness score and really just the entire morning report that this watch provides. You can see stuff like how you slept the night before, your HRV score, which is your heart rate variability, which is a, it's a great metric to judge just how recovered you are in the morning. There's absolutely loads more features in here too. Uh, really just too many to mention, uh, but there's a new uh, stamina metric where Garmin is trying to predict just how much endurance you have left. It's not something that I use a ton personally. Uh, I find it a little bit more useful on cycling side of things as opposed to running, but you can use it for both. Uh, but this watch also provides blood oxygen saturation. Garmin calls it their pulse ox feature, running power right from the wrist. 
uh, uh, the running dynamics information, which is actually a collection of different running metrics. And that's stuff like ground contact time, vertical oscillation. Um, overall, this watch is just, it's an extremely full featured device. So there's a lot to like about this Garmin Forerunner 965. And I always like to talk about some things that I dislike about each of these devices. So what don't I like about this watch or what do I wish were different? Well, I don't have a ton of complaints about this watch, but I'll say that it is priced at $600, which it is still expensive. Um, Garmin hasn't really raised the price on this 900 series of watches in quite a while, so I can't complain about the price too much here. Uh, I do wish that there was actually a lot more to the upgrade of this device in comparison to the Forerunner 955. Uh, this watch is basically the same as the 955 with an updated watch body and that brighter display. Um, the watch's UI also got a little bit of a redesign here, but it's not something that I love. Uh, I don't know if I would really say that I prefer it to the more basic UI design of some of Garmin's other watches. And I would definitely have loved to have seen a flashlight on this device. I know that's a weird thing, uh, but I imagine we will probably see that in the future. Um, I've just kind of grown accustomed to having a flashlight on my watch and I kind of can't live without one now. And I would have also loved to have seen uh, an ECG functionality on this device. Garmin does have it now on some of their other watches. I'm not exactly sure why it's not on this one. I think that they'll probably upgrade the heart rate monitor in the future on this device and potentially include that. Uh, that definitely would have been nice. And at some point I'd love to see Garmin introduce wireless charging or um, some sort of like Qi charging functionality to these devices. I'd love to not have to plug these devices, maybe just drop it on a pad and have it charge up. So overall, those are just more like of some wishes and not a ton of complaints here. I'd say that the Garmin Forerunner 965 really is a fantastic option. If you're someone who is into swimming, biking, or running like myself, or uh, you prefer a lighter weight design to these watches, as opposed to some of the heavier or more bulky options like the Phoenix or the Epic series of watches from Garmin, then I'd say that the Garmin Forerunner 965 really is one of the best options for you to consider right now. Now there is a more affordable Forerunner 265, which is very similar to this watch. It's actually a little bit smaller. Uh, it lacks maps uh, and it lacks golf. Um, it has a little bit less storage, I think. It's actually not a watch that I've reviewed here on this channel, but it costs $450. So that might be another watch for you to consider when you're considering this 965. But this Garmin Forerunner 965 has held up extremely well for me personally. And it's one of those watches that's absolutely loaded with features. So if you're on the fence about this watch, I do feel like I can safely recommend it. But either way, whether you're looking at the Forerunner 965 or not, or you know GPS watch or not, uh, I really do hope that you're getting out there swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.